out on the tyre and it meant that they had to qualify on a different set of tyres than they would have really liked and that they felt uh, didn't help them very much. We've just had some news though that this car, Bobby Rahal, number seven, has uh, picked up a black flag because he wasn't properly in line when the start took place. So Bobby Rahal has picked up a black flag. He's going to have to come into the pits, running at the moment in seventh place. Yeah, he went like that. Uh, Bobby Rahal, of course, as you said earlier on, Ben, he won the first race here in Cleveland in 1982. He's the only driver actually to compete in every single race here at the Burke Lakefront Airport. And uh, poor Bobby Rahal, he's been 85 races since his last victory in 1992, and this won't do his cause any good whatsoever. No, a great shame for the experienced veteran who's been very much on the pace this weekend although in qualifying it didn't quite work out for him and uh, he qualified down in ninth position in the end but Ray Hall always a threat when things are going well as we saw in that race in Brazil earlier on this season which he lost by just uh, a drop of fuel in the end Paul Tracy though is looking very much better than we've seen so far this weekend Penske have been struggling to get this car to perform as they would like the cars have to be lifted a little bit on the ride height here for this track it's so bumpy out there they have to lift the, the bottom of the car up a little bit and they've been struggling to get the car to handle right in that configuration meanwhile Bobby Rahal now comes into the pits quite a long run down the pit lane here on the limiter at 60 miles per hour and of course that's going to drop him way way down the pack there's Jimmy Vassar a little further down he's in 10th place with the yellow and orange car of Scott Pruitt right behind him and then behind him is uh, Andre Ribeiro running in 12th position Remember, Andre Ribeiro driving a Reynard. There it is with the yellow nose cone. Very distinctive car. And interesting to see a long way down. In 13th place is Greg Moore. And meanwhile, you're now watching the battle between Guelta Sales and Alonso Jr. They're also a long way down with Sales 14th, Alonso Jr. in 15th. As somebody runs a little wide, kicks up the dust, but uh, no major problems there. And it's interesting to see quite a few of these front-running drivers, particularly Greg Moore and Alonso Jr., this far down the field. Yeah, and, and Ribeiro as well. He started off 8th. He's been as low as 15th. He was a couple of laps ago. He's now back up to 12th. Of course, one position gained when uh, uh, Bobby Rahal came in the pits here, but still, uh, he's making some progress there uh, after a fairly tardy start, let's see. But the, the race certainly begins to settle down now. And as you say, a good move by... There is... Uh, Duarte Salas there, running in 14th place at the moment. Pretty good effort by uh, the young Brazilian driver, right behind Greg Moore. There is Scott Pruitt trying to make a move on Jimmy Vassar. That's for 10th place, not this time, as they go into turn one. Getting close between those two. Scott Pruitt made a couple of mistakes in Portland, coming out on the uh, main straight there when he spun the car in the damp conditions, and he felt he was just being a little too over-aggressive and it looks as though he's deciding to play things a little more carefully at least in the early stages of this race we look back from Jimmy Vassar's car the positions at the moment after five laps Zanardi leads from De Ferran Fittipaldi third her to fourth and Paul Tracy already he's moved up to fifth place Welcome back to the Medic Grand Prix of Cleveland and we're looking down the field at the moment at Andre Ribeiro he's dropped back a place behind Greg Moore he just got a little wide onto the grass and that gave Greg Moore the opportunity to go through. But what we must remember, Jeremy, this is really the first time Andre's had a chance to drive the Reynard on full tanks and in anger in the race. That is absolutely true. And uh, the team really does a has done a phenomenal job this weekend to get to grips with the car so quickly. But certainly Andre himself, uh, under race conditions, he's, 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 he's had to, to break some old habits. He was really struggling with that Lola. There was no confidence from the back end of the car. The back end of the car just felt like it was not connected to the front end. And, and uh, he was really struggling with that. And he's now going to overcome the uh, habits that he, he, he's had to, to try and save his life, effectively, driving a Lola. So uh, the car is a lot better to drive, but he's just got to get himself up to speed. And he's in a, very much a, a steep learning process right now in the early stages of this race. Yes, and up against a lot of teams and drivers who've been working with the Reynard all season. So they know it's a foible perfectly. They know exactly how to get the best out of the car. And an intense competition between all the Reynard teams. But don't forget, uh, it's not just Reynards out there. The Penske's and the Swifts aren't going badly either. And you're on board a Swift now. That's the car of Michael Andretti. He's down in sixth position behind Paul Tracy in the Penske. And these two, having uh, sorted themselves out a few laps ago, they've now settled down a little bit. We've had ten laps out of the 90 so far. And uh, the top five cars are separated by something like 5.6 seconds at the moment. So it's all staying very close. Certainly not a case of Zanardi disappearing off up front. The gap between Zanardi and Deferran first to second is some 2.2 seconds. And that gives you an idea of just how close and how competitive it is in these early stages of the race. Paul Tracy has continues on his way, chasing after Brian Herter. And Herter definitely one to watch here this weekend. He's been very quick all weekend. A little bit unlucky in qualifying yesterday. They didn't quite get it right. But he likes this track, has always gone well here. 
and he could be a one to watch in the latter stages. Yeah, as you say, always goes well. He had uh, his, his best finish was been here. It's equally his best finish at least. And two years ago, 95, he was second place here. He's done a couple, another couple of second places since then, but he was uh, he's always gone well here and he qualifies well, races well, loves the place, loves the track. It's really his home crowd now as well. He's based only a couple of hours away, uh, just outside of Columbus. He is a native Californian, but he now considers Ohio to be his home. And there we're looking at her to behind him, Tracy and Andretti, just thinking about looking down the inside. Not, uh, not at this stage, though, for on board again now with Michael Andretti in sixth place and chasing after Paul Tracy. Yeah, this is getting uh, quite exciting between these two experienced campaigners. Once again, all a little bit uh, sideways on the brakes there for Andretti as he slowed down to around about 100 miles an hour. They're still pretty quick through those two sequences of corners. Most of these bends taken in third or fourth gear, and uh, he's just in fourth gear through the left-hander, up through the right-hander in fourth gear, about 110 miles an hour, building up to 150 just here, then back on the brakes, just a touch of brakes before the next right-hander, and then some staying in fourth, some going down to third for this one, coming out of here at about 100 miles an hour alongside the concrete wall, and then accelerating back up through fifth, sixth gear, and 180 miles an hour as they get back onto the brakes again, and through this right-left flick that brings them onto the start-finish straight alongside the pits, and uh, also Lots of fun and games going on as they begin to lap some of the back markers. Yeah, Brian Hurt there held up horribly by Charlie Nierberg there, who really was not paying attention coming out of that corner. Paul Tracy was able to fly past Brian Hurt, and uh, Hurt did a good job there to keep uh, Michael Andretti behind him. But uh, there's plenty of room on this race track, and Charlie Nierberg, he was trying to get out of the way, but he just made the wrong move. There are the two cars coming off the corner, and he actually pushed uh, Hurt off the road onto the grass. Yeah, so Charlie Nierberg in the yellow car, pushing the shell car of Brian Herter wide there, and Paul Tracy managing to slip past. Let's take another look at that one from above. Do we get that in the bottom of the picture? There it is, you see, and uh, Nierberg really should have been much more aware that Herter was alongside him at that point. He obviously realised the way he cut right across to the other side of the track, but it was too late then. The uh, Texan... Charlie Nierberg, a uh, fairly older than most of the other guys, has basically brought some money along to buy the drive with the Peyton Coin team, has raced in the Atlantic series in the past. And his main worry, uh, Jeremy, is he told you was to keep out of everybody's way, but he hasn't done that, uh, according no, to that. No, he really is. He's a, he's a wonderful gentleman, Charlie Nierberg, and this, he is achieving a lifetime ambition here, but uh, he really has got to realise that this is the big leagues and uh, there's no room for, for his sort of driver, I'm afraid, at uh, this, uh, this level of competition. And uh, he'll be, I think we'll find him parking the car fairly soon. I think he'll realise he's out of his depth. He knew after his first test there he is staying right out of the way there at, at turn one, and good job by him. But I think we'll find him parking the car fairly soon. If not, uh, if not, I think you'll see a black flag from uh, Wally Dunn about the Chief Stewart. Yes, that's right. They won't want to see him getting in everybody's way. Meanwhile, we're watching the battle going on slightly further back between Jimmy Vassar and Scott Pruitt. This is the battle for 10th position, remember? Behind them, you'll get a glimpse of Greg Moore and Andre Ribeiro still in that battle. And uh, this battle has been pretty close for quite a few laps now. The leader has now completed 13 laps, and it's still Alex Zanardi, and he has a lead of just 2.7 seconds over Gilles de Ferre, and it's really not much at all with Christian Filippaldi doing another fine, fine job in third place. But Christian is going to struggle here today. Fitness is going to be an issue and also the bumps are a big issue he's still racing with pins in his leg remember after the accident in uh, surface paradise in australia where he broke his leg earlier this year this track being so bumpy means their legs get thrown around a lot inside the tunnel that goes down towards the pedals in the monocoque the carbon fiber monocoque and that's going to make life very painful for christian fittipaldi as we go through the course of this race but so far he's doing a fine job and holding on to third position Still looking at uh, this battle going on further back between Jimmy Vassar, who was on pole position here last year, but didn't look anything like getting onto the pole this year. And Scott Pruitt right behind him, who's been a championship campaigner pretty much throughout the season so far, but he's had a, a little bit of a poor run recently. He's down in seventh position now. Yeah, and struggled all weekend to get a proper handle on his target, Reynard Honda. Uh, he was happier yesterday afternoon, but still he slipped back uh, you know, to 15th place on the grid. That's certainly not where Jimmy Vassar expects to be every week. He's been very consistent really this season he's run very very well indeed uh, but uh, just not on the game this weekend eh? Julian Roberts and his chief engineer just has not got the right handle on that car and Jimmy has certainly been struggling just comparing the speeds you can see the the advantage that uh, Zanardi has over him particularly in the mid segment of the track 
over Jimmy Vassar. That's where he seems to be losing the most in terms of average speed. And Zanardi's had that edge all just about all weekend. That was a good shot, wasn't it? As, uh, as he went under breaking into the hairpin, Pruitt went out of view and then suddenly reappeared in view. There are the positions. You can see Mark Blundell is down to seventh position now behind Michael Andretti with Dario Franchitti still holding on to eighth with Gujamin behind him in ninth and Vassar there holding on to tenth place. Up front, though, still the same story with the Italian Alex Zanardi leading after some 15 laps. Just inching away a tenth a second or so a lap. is now out to just over three seconds. Uh, a steady one second back to Christian Filippaldi in third place. But Alex Zanardi is actually coming up on a couple of back markers now. The uh, two cars of Art Meyer and, and Hiro Matsushita are just ahead of him on the racetrack. So that's going to be interesting to see how he negotiates those two. And perhaps that will allow Gilles Lefebvre just to make it a little bit closer. Now then, you can see this is uh, him coming up on the back markers. Alex Zanardi going past Matsushita very cleanly and effectively, no problems for him there. And uh, yes, there in the background, Gilles de Ferran. So he has opened up a bit more of an advantage now. And remember that Zanardi runs on the Firestone tyres, the Ferran runs on the Goodyear tyres. So we've got the two different tyre manufacturers up there. In the past, it's uh, looked as though as we go through a race, the Goodyear sometimes seem a little stronger, but right now, Zanardi's going very, very well indeed, and uh, we've completed 16 laps. The first pit stops, if we don't get any yellow flags, be around lap 30, we would think, either slightly before, slightly after lap 30. So we're about halfway to the first pit stop at the moment, and Zanardi doing a fine job up front, getting past the German racer there. Aunt Meyer is doing a good job keeping out of the way, and they're still very much learning the trade of driving one of these cars. And that's given Zanardi just that little bit more of an edge over Gilles de Ferran, who now has the same task of lapping these slower cars. There goes Gilles de Ferran, here at Matsushita, keeper, well out of the way there in turn one. And uh, there behind him is Christian Foldy, Fittipaldi, who will try and make a move now as he speed along the back straight alongside Lake Erie and into turn three there. A nice shot of Gilles de Ferran turning into that corner. Uh, here comes Art Meyer. There is Gilles de Ferran. And uh, he's setting his sights still on Alex Zanardi, but Alex Zanardi's still just creeping away a little bit more. Well, we'll have to see whether he can maintain that advantage, still keep uh, pulling away Zanardi, who's had a bit of an up-and-down season. Very much one of the pre-season favourites for the title, but it hasn't really gone his way in recent times. He had the one victory so far this year, that was in Long Beach, after a good battle with Gilles de Ferran on that occasion. But Zanardi very far up, very determined to make the best of this particular race, as de Ferran goes safely past Aunt Meyer. And now Christian Fittipaldi will try to do the same in the Swift. Behind Fittipaldi, still Paul Tracy running in fourth place. Brian Herter is fifth. And then uh, behind him, there we are, Fittipaldi now just on board with him, going past Aunt Meyer. And you can see Tracy in the background, then Herter, and then Michael Andretti all finding their way past Hiro Matsushita. So things really settling down a little bit at the moment. Drivers trying to look after their tyres, trying to make sure that they're not uh, wearing the tyres too quickly. And on board with Michael Andretti as he now also makes a move on the Japanese driver. Back on board with Gilles de Ferran chasing after Alex Zanardi. And de Ferran, who has led on many occasions so far this year, but uh, it hasn't all quite come together for him so far. No, he's, he's been incredibly unlucky. 